everybody, I'm Jamel. Spell Jamal, pronounce Jamel. We're in the middle of one of my favorite seasons of the year, and that's Easter. Why do I love it so much? Well, let me tell you why. Because Easter has the best candy. And no, I'm not talking about peeps. I'm talking about the fact that when it's Easter, they change the shape of all the traditional candy bars, right? And an Easter Twix is the best Twix. Because they change it to like be an egg shaped and then the proportions are different, but better, I'm just telling you. And of course, getting together with family and friends, I love Easter because it gives us a chance to learn more about who Jesus really is. In fact, that's what this series is all about. It's called Who Is Jesus? And in it, we're discovering more and more about who Jesus is and what he means to us. So before we get into that, have you ever thought about something that would make your life really fun? I mean, really, take a second, think about it, I'll wait. Okay, I'm sure you thought of some really cool things, right? Like maybe hanging out with your favorite celebrity all day or finding out there's an early release day from school. Yes. Whatever you thought about, it was probably something that would make you happier. It's something you thought that would be more fun. Basically, something that would make life better. That's kind of how we make decisions in our lives too. We choose the thing that would make us happier. Should I play basketball or soccer? Should I audition for the play? Should I join that club after school? Should I hang out with my homies? Should I participate in groups at church? No matter what the decision is, it almost always comes back to the same question. Does this make my life better or worse? And it's a great question. Since you and I have only one life, it makes sense that we would want to get the most out of it. It makes sense that we would want everything we do to make us happier or be exciting or be good for us. We want to choose things that will make our lives better. And for most of us, we approach church and faith in the same exact way. Is it going to be any fun? Will I be happier? Will it make my life better? Maybe we don't ask those questions out loud, but we probably thought them a time or two. And honestly, I understand why. People talk about having faith in God or following Jesus like it makes your life way better. They use words like life-changing or mind-blowing. Even around here, we say that knowing Jesus changes everything. Maybe you've heard someone tell their story of how they started following Jesus and their life changed in a really good way. Or maybe you have a story like that in your own life. And yes, stories like that are great. But maybe, like me, you found yourself wondering, is that really possible? How can following a guy who lived 2,000 years ago change that much about my life? How can a religion with so many rules make my life any more fun or more enjoyable? Does faith in God really make your life better? If you're asking questions like these, I want you to know they're not bad or wrong. In fact, it's okay to ask. After all, we can't find these answers if we don't ask the questions. That's why we want you to ask, because we believe that following Jesus can change your life for the better, and we want you to know and experience that too. So, to get some idea of what all this faith stuff really can do for our lives, I want to look back to the time when Jesus was alive on Earth. What's cool is that Jesus' followers wrote down what they heard Jesus say and what they experienced during his life and ministry. So now, when we wonder what Jesus is like, we can look to their records of his life to find our answers. In his teaching, Jesus often used illustrations or examples that were a part of everyday life at the time. And one of those illustrations was about sheep and their shepherd. It was a concept that everybody in that culture understood. People saw shepherds taking care of their sheep all the time back then. So they knew that it was a shepherd's job to make sure that the sheep were safe. As he was using this illustration, Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd. Who are his sheep? We are. And according to Jesus, that means he takes care of us, feeds us, helps us rest in safety. It was a nice little word picture he had going on there. Then, right in the middle of his teaching, Jesus made a huge statement. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I don't know about you, but for me, that feels like a very random term. We were just talking about sheep, and now you're telling me this terrible news about a thief? What is happening here? Well, back then, thieves were a problem. 
I mean, thieves are still a problem now, but even more so back then, thieves were a problem. It was a real thing that someone might steal or hurt a shepherd's sheep. But again, Jesus was talking about himself as the good shepherd here. And remember, we, his followers, are his sheep. So how is a thief even part of the conversation? Well, let's look at how Jesus continued. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that. Here, Jesus was making a very important point. He was showing us the difference between himself and the thief. He's saying that this is why a thief shows up, to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I'm going to tell you why I show up. Honestly here, I think Jesus knew he needed to say this because so often we don't see Jesus as the good shepherd. Instead, we're tempted to see him more as the thief. And this is real talk, y'all. This is, this is, I'm keeping it 100 with you. When I was in college, I was doing what I felt like was following Jesus and what God wanted me to do, which was actually volunteering in my local youth group. And so I was a youth leader and it's my first year being a youth leader and we had this really big retreat coming up. I loved youth leading, but I also loved music. So my two favorite bands, not one of my favorite bands, but two of my favorite bands were coming together to my city on the same exact weekend as the youth retreat. Ah! I had a decision to make. I had to decide to myself, am I gonna go on this youth retreat as this youth leader and have this experience, or am I gonna go to this concert that I really wanna go to and have this experience? And I decided to go on the retreat and have that experience. But I definitely said some prayers to God where I was like, God, why though? I feel like if I just wasn't following you, I wouldn't have this issue. I wouldn't be missing out on this kind of fun. I felt like I was missing out on something because I was following Jesus. Because we think Jesus is all about stealing our fun, right? You're like, oh goodness, here comes Jesus taking all of our fun away and dumping it somewhere else, you know what I'm saying? There goes my fun. And we think that Jesus will kill all of our relationships, right? Here comes Jesus making my relationships nowhere near as fun as they could have been. And we think that Jesus will destroy what we really want. Like, I got these wants, Jesus, but no, you want me to do these other things that I maybe don't really want? Okay, Jesus, fine. And we think that Jesus wants us to make choices that cause us to miss out on stuff. Like, I'm trying to do this, Jesus, but Jesus is like, nah, 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 nah. You're gonna have to miss out on that thing. And we get to this point where we worry that if we follow Jesus, some part of our lives will be stolen, killed, or destroyed. We'll have to give up on our dreams. We'll have to give away everything that we really want. We're going to miss out on friends or dating people or doing things that we think are fun. We're going to have to live boring, boring lives. The point is, when it comes to Jesus, we're all tempted to think that he wants to take something away from us. And that's why I think Jesus brought this up. He knew his followers might feel this way. He knew that they'd think something about him that wasn't true. So he wanted to make sure his people were crystal clear about who he is and why he came to them. And that's why he finished with this. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. In other words, Jesus was saying, I didn't come to take away your life. That's what a thief does. And I ain't no thief. I have come to make sure you have life and not just any life, but life to the full. Jesus's goal isn't for us to have less of a life. He wants to give us more life, a better life, a full life. Now, does that mean that we get everything we want? That everybody will like us back? That we'll have a million friends? That God will rain down Doritos, spicy nacho, because that's the best, from the sky so that we never run out? Man, I wish, because I love me some spicy Doritos. Probably not. Does it mean we'll never get bored, never get our feelings hurt, never feel pain? Nope, but it does mean that we can trust that even in difficult times, Jesus isn't trying to take anything away from our lives. Instead, we can trust that he wants to lead us in a good direction. It means we can trust that he will lead us towards more of what we really want in life. Things like more fun, 
Okay, maybe you never thought about it this way, but did you know that God actually invented fun? God created the part of your brain that lights up when you're having a blast with your soccer team or hanging out with your homies. Happiness and enjoyment were God's ideas, y'all. Jesus didn't come to take away our opportunities to have a good time. Instead, he says, let me show you a way to live that brings more joy, bigger joy. Joy that doesn't fall apart just because you had one bad day. The goal was never less fun, it was more. Better relationships. The truth is we all want solid, real friendships. Following Jesus can make you better at finding those kind of friends and being that kind of friend. But that's not all, y'all. The same is true for your family and even your dating relationships. Jesus wants you to find more of the right kind of people and have better relationships. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Things like what you really want. What if Jesus wants to help you discover what you want most in life? That might mean more than just giving you what you want right now. Of course, things might not go exactly how you want them to go all the time, but following Jesus leads to more joy, more peace, more real friends, more real adventures, more fun. More of the good stuff that makes life awesome. Who doesn't want that? Things like wise choices. This is a big one because choices can be really hard to make. How are we supposed to always know what is good for you or not so good for you? Wise or unwise, helpful or unhelpful? The good news is that Jesus wants to give you wisdom to make those choices. He wants to help you choose what's good and wise and helpful for your life so that you can experience a life that is bigger and better because of it. I think that's what Jesus was getting at in his message. He didn't come to steal or kill or destroy any part of our lives. He came to help us have real life. In other words, following Jesus won't make your life lesser. In fact, because of Jesus, we can have life to the full. So how does this work? How do you find the more better, fuller life that Jesus offers. For some of you, I think the first step is to say yes to Jesus for the very first time. Maybe you've always thought that Jesus is angry or boring or that following him meant living a miserable life. Today, I'd like you to consider this question. What if that just isn't true? What would it look like for you to say yes to the one person who can change your life for the better? For others of us, maybe we've already said yes to a relationship with Jesus, but we haven't experienced the life he describes. So maybe it's time for us to say yes to the things that Jesus says yes to. So much of what Jesus leads us to do will actually make our lives better. When we make good choices or decide to serve someone else or we spend time getting to know more about Jesus, we do that because it makes things better for us and for others. There are a million ways to experience this, but let's start with just one. What if this week you just said yes to serve someone? Serving someone else can make their lives so much better, but it can actually make our lives better and happier and richer as well. Serving isn't something that a serious, no fun God would ask you to do. It's something that makes everyone's lives better, including yours. So what's one way that you could help someone else? Volunteer to work with the little kids? They'll love you. Volunteer to help an elementary schooler with their homework? You'll be their hero. Volunteer to work with the elderly at a senior home? They'll be so happy that you're there. Volunteering for a missions trip? You may get to combine all these other things with a huge adventure. You'll be helping meet a need and potentially changing someone's life for the better. Can you imagine feeling less joy after doing something like that? Remember, because of Jesus, we can have life to the full. Listen, I get people don't always talk about Jesus like this. Sometimes you hear stories from people who follow Jesus that make it seem like it's all rules and no fun at all. That's why this question, who is Jesus, is mad important for everyone to ask because we want you to know and experience who Jesus really is. We want you to have the full life that he promises. I love for you to talk about this very thing with your group today. Groups are a great place to talk about your questions with people who want to help and encourage you in your faith so that you can see how following Jesus makes your life better. My life's gonna be better after I have one of these gumball things, green favorite color, like it's flavored green. It's not, it's just color green, you know what I'm saying.